Opening day is tomorrow. The Cubs are at Wrigley against the Brewers, while the White Sox are in Houston. Gosh, it came so fast. We're here. <laughs> we it are has here. Arrived. Sox and Cubs fans, they do not agree on much. No. We know that. But they both loved having Harry Carey as the hometown voice of their team's broadcast for so long. CBS 2's Jackie Kostick live at Harry Carey's at Navy Pier. And Jackie, you have a Cubs Hall of Famer who was once one of Harry's favorite ball players of all time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Chris and Audrina, good morning to you. I do indeed. It's already been such a fun morning out here at Harry Carey's. And I'm so lucky to be with Ryan Sandberg right now. Hall of Famer, uh, let's see if I can get this right. MVP, nine-time Gold Glove winner, ten-time All-Star, seven-time Silver Slugger. Uh, Someone, something like that. Yeah, right. yeah, I forget. <laughs> you forget. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about um, just being out here. I, I know that you've been out here for most of the 25 years that they've been doing these worldwide toasts to well, the legend himself. Yeah, there's not too many things that I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning for. <laughs> Fishing is one and golf, but it's still dark out for golf. But uh, but this, this is one thing that I, I try and make every year, and I think I've only missed one. But Harry was a, a big part of my career. Obviously, the uh, broadcaster with Steve Stone, WGN TV, 162 games broadcast across the country, and we had the identical years with the Cubs, 82 to 97. So he he played a big part in my career. I knew that I was I knew that uh, he was he was he was uh, critiquing my play every single game that I played. So I needed to play well because he he could critique and. Uh, a very uh, tough way, so I tried to do the, my best to play good baseball. Yeah, anything, well, which you which you did a darn good job of. Do you remember anything specific that he told you? Like, would he ever pull you aside and tell you anything like that? No, he didn't. I just, but I just heard from my teammates that sometimes he would get on during the broadcast. They would be in a slump and uh, and they'd get all bent out of shape in the locker room after the game. And it, it, uh, the other other players would kind of say that had been there. Hey. Just play better baseball, and Harry will tell you, say that you're playing good baseball. So that took care of itself. So uh, whenever I talked to Harry, he'd come down during batting practice and get a little tidbit about the team we were playing before the series during batting practice or who was pitching that day. And I'd give him a little something, then he'd walk off, and that'd be it. But, uh, you know, I knew, I knew that uh, my friends back in Spokane, Washington, were watching me play, my buddies, my family and then people across the country. I think still today I've met nearly every every Cubs fan that was watching Harry on WGN TV at 1.20 the afternoon. I think I'm still meeting them all because I think everybody was watching, especially in 1984 when it all started. Absolutely, and he's actually the one that give you, gave you the Rhino nickname, right? Because you said you had mentioned Sandy. He did, and I appreciated that because my name was uh, mispronounced so many times going way back to grade school and as a young kid and even in high school uh, playing sports on the on the basketball games. Ryan Sandberg, you know, announced, you know, as, as a starting lineup or whatever, or football. They always said Ryan. So when Harry had, uh, uh, gave me the nickname of Rhino, I, I appreciated that because it was Ryan with an O at the end of it. And it also simulated it like a like a Rhino, like charging. And that's the way that I tried to play, and I, I, I kind of emulated that after he gave me that nickname. Because I have you here, let's talk a little bit about the Cubs. I know you're going to be there for opening day tomorrow. Cubs had a really active offseason, so who are you most excited to play their first game to see play their first game at Wrigley tomorrow well you know what um, you know, I, I would just say the whole team you know it's, it's a whole team that, that wins and uh, I only I was able to get out for spring training for just uh, seven or eight days this year was a little way less than I usually do so just to uh, meet those guys and see them uh, was, was a thrill but um, I think just to see the whole team you know the vibe that I get from back here, just seeing them on the Marquee Network and 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 listen to the interviews. They're they're they seem to be a close knit group and uh, all on the same page about uh, gelling together and playing together. And they mention their teammates when they speak. I think that's huge. So I just want to see the whole club. It takes a whole team to win. So I'm anxious for tomorrow. And um, I think they had a really good spring training. So I think the fans are ready. I think the fans are ready too. And this is really how they're getting going this morning here at Harry. Carries. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Legend Harry Carey, legend Sandberg. We are just uh, so delighted to be here. So, Chris and Andrina, back to you. That is super cool. Ryan Sandberg was the one of the baseball players I grew up on during that same stretch of years he's talking about with Harry Carey. Sean Dunstan, Ryan Sandberg. Very cool to see him with us live this morning. Jackie, thanks so much.